Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us here in our new studio. We've only been here a few months. We were in Hatton Garden. Some of you may have been to our old place in Hatton Garden, so we haven't moved too far, but it uh, gives us a lot more room, much better for this type of occasion. So it's our first real seminar. We had an open day when we came here, but it's our first proper seminar. So delighted that Lawrence has uh, chosen to work with us on this. So hopefully you'll have a good day. Um, paper mills, unfortunately, are about tons and turnover, so you get a bit of that. We can't help it. We can't help ourselves. Um, but hopefully we'll also talk about product, and uh, that'll be the interesting bit. Um, Federigoni has some history, which I think is quite interesting, and it's still a family business. There's still a Mr. Federigoni. I meet with him three times a year. But actually, next year, um, Fabriano, which is part of the Federigoni group, actually celebrates 850 years of making paper. So we will be making some noise about that, which is quite something. And this year, Federigoni, as a company, is 125 years old. And in fact, we've got an event next uh, week to celebrate that, and there's invitations, I think, in your goodie bag. So you're all welcome to that as well. So. Uh, so quite a lot of history behind this business, and I won't go through all, all the details there, but it has acquired businesses, it's um, uh, grown through building new paper mills, um, and is a significant business with a, a really good history. And um, this is actually the old structure of the group, but it probably makes it easier to explain what we're about, in that there's four major divisions for the Fedrigoni group. Fedrigoni is the paper making side, we'll talk a bit more about that. Fabriano is also a paper making side, but it's got some very interesting things. It's got a stationary business. Um, it's got, it makes currency paper. We make the euro in Italy. Um, it's got a securities division because we make the bits that go in the euro that make it you know, a security paper. Uh, and we've also got a, a retail side. And in fact, uh, Fabriano Boutique, which has 13 shops around the world, tends to be in the major cities, will open in London um, next month. So that's quite exciting for us. And that's really nice stationary. Uh, products uh, and also leather goods and it's sort of a, competes with Smyson and the top end of the market so really it'll be quite nice to have a, a shop in London that's part of the group. Um, Arkenbert and Manta that's really quite a separate business we do sell their products but that's self-adhesive papers and to put it simply it doesn't quite work like this Arkenbert makes sheets Manta make reels and Manta are very involved in the, the label business and have a really strong market share and those bits of business are actually very profitable and uh, and have been a really good investment. Obviously, they convert a lot of the Federigoni products, so that's what the Federigoni would be pretty good at that sort of strategy over the year um, in, in um, using their own products and adding value through the through the chain. Uh, on this side, you can see that we have um, branches, um, which are uh, where we are a separate company, Federigoni UK. We have to make a living and live off that. So we're um, and and that's the same in Hong Kong, uh, France, Germany, Spain, and Benelux, which is our most recent. <coughs> Um, uh, company that we've opened and those are wholly owned distribution companies so we're quite unusual in that respect a lot of paper mills sell through paper merchants uh, we do that as well and we're talking about our, about our partnership with Premier but we, um, but we also have our own distribution which makes us quite an efficient route to market and we do that really quite differently from a lot of other companies so we have our own Federigoni merchants if you like in, in those places and, uh, and that works very well for us that is actually the new structure of the company. In fact, Federigoni and, and Fabriano merged last year to make it that we'd owned them for 10 years. In fact, Federigoni bought Fabriano from the, from the government. It was, a, it was a government owned business because of the security nature. And like most governments, they're trying to privatize things. So we actually bought Fabrioni for a euro, but have spent about 100, 000, uh, um, 100 million euros on it since and brought it up to date. So, but it's been a very good investment. So and Fabriano in Italy is an incredibly strong brand, big stationary brand. Uh, office paper brand and, and we're starting to grow that in the UK as well so nowadays it's really one company Federigoni SPA with those production units um, and you can see from that in a very difficult market paper is incredibly difficult um, generally it's a shrinking market something like 10% a year uh, when I first came into the paper industry many years ago getting on for 30 years ago this was a business that generally grew about 2% above GDP so if you hope the economy was growing at 5%, paper consumption was growing at 7, 8, and it was a fantastic business. It just grew and grew and grew. But uh, I think all the internet came along a few years back, and then you can see that actually paper consumption fell off, uh, and it's inevitable. The good thing is, the bit of the business we're in, which tends to be the top end, we're still growing, in, and please say this year, for doing the UK, is growing 30% on growth of nearly 40% last year, because digital and the high end is still working really well. Commodity paper inevitably shrinking. You know, are people going to print catalogues when they can do it efficiently on the web? But 
when they print something nice and they want quality, they still seem to want a good paper. So that's the only reason I can give for the, the fact that we are still growing. So our sector is good, and you can see from that, the group has managed to grow its turnover every year. Uh, and last year we did nearly 800 million. This year we should be about 850 million. And more importantly, it makes a good profit, which you have to do in paper making because you have to invest a lot of money each year just to keep the, the machines up to date. So profitable business, really long term. Uh, been here 125 years, I think we'll be here for a bit longer as well. Um, that's the split between Fedrigoni and Fabriano. Uh, about 40% of the group is the Fedrigoni paper making side, 30% Fabriano. The boutique side is a, is a very small business, but quite high profile. And there's the self-adhesive business, where you've got about 30% of the business is self-adhesive, split between half and work for sheets, matter for the real business. So that's the, the sort of makeup of the group. Uh, this is interesting because when I joined five years ago, the number I can always remember, Italy was always about 50%. The business we do in Italy, the turnover we generate from Italy, was always about half of what the Federigoni Group did. Now you can see it's dropped to 40%. Um, uh, one of the reasons I was interested in joining Federigoni was they said our growth has got to come from export. You know, so the, the, they've supported us really well, let us invest in things like this, more warehouse space in Northampton because they need, they, they couldn't keep growing in Italy. When you've got a 50% market share, it's very difficult to keep growing. So their growth is coming out of the export market, and we are quite a big part of that it's coming from the UK, I'm pleased to say. So 30% now comes from um, other European businesses, and we're growing quite quickly in Asia, as you can imagine, that's a, that's a growth business. Um, a lot of European um, end users want to print in Asia, uh, but they also want to use a substrate that they know. So we do ship a lot of paper. Uh, we do that as Fedragoni, where publishers want to buy from us and we ship it to Asia. Um, and obviously it's a big market in its own right. So um, that's, uh, and we've invested quite heavily in Asia with warehouses and it's obviously a big growth area for us. But I'm pleased to say, as is the UK. Uh, the nice thing about Fedragoni, it does still fit it's quite a big business, employ over 2,000 people, getting on for 100, um, getting on for a billion euros turnover, but it does still feel like a family business. You know, when you want a quick decision on things, you can get to the top very quickly, um, so they're very good at that, they're very bad about some other things. Small decisions take a long time, they're very happy when you want to invest in something, they like, like the big decisions. Um, but it does feel, we had a um, dinner in Verona to celebrate 125 years, and they managed to get a lot of people there. Of course the mills had to keep running, so everyone, but there was over a thousand people there, and it, it sort of came home to me that this is still a family business. They were very pleased to have their photo taken with Mr. Pedragoni, and it was a yeah, really nice night. And I think it does make a difference that there is that, that's still that side of the business, um, but it remains very well invested as well. In terms of production, uh, the Pedragoni mills, we've got three members, they're all in nice places, I'm pleased to say. One's in Verona, right in the middle of Verona, which is a lovely city. Um, uh, we've also got a mill at Arco, which is on Lake Garda, uh, and Verone, which is also on the on the shores of Lake Garda. So not the worst places to visit, and yep. you've been there lots, haven't you? So it's quite a pleasant place, and more importantly, they make good paper. Fabriano's production is in central Italy, again, very nice part of the world, just uh, just south of Tuscany. Um, we have the big Fabriano mill that makes a lot of office papers, they make the Euro there, and some of you may know the Fabriano artist papers, um, a lot of designers probably come across them in their, uh, in their student days. So Fabriano, a very strong name in the artist paper sector, uh, stationary sector, and, and that's growing. And we're, um, we've just got a range of the Fabriano books into Tesco's, Asda, Staples, uh, all branded as Fabriano. So we're, we're growing our stationary business, which is really a, it's very interesting and a new side of the paper business for me anyway. Um, Manto, um, Arkenbert is alongside our coated mill on Lake Garda we use a lot of the substrates from there as the face papers. And Manta is a Spanish company that we bought quite a few years back where we, we make the reels for, and uh, they have a very, very strong wine label and uh, um, that business in Europe, they, they dominate that. Um, big part of what we do is logistics. We have two huge logistics centers in Italy. One is based around near Fabriano, one near Verona. Uh, that's where we call a lot of our stock from, so anything they've got there we can normally get in the UK in three or four days, which is really important. There's two or three trucks a day coming from Italy, replenishing our warehouses and giving us a good service on a huge range. I mean, it is uh, a huge logistics. We have 3,000 product lines, so keeping that lot in stock is really difficult, you know, and combining that with paper making programs. So they do a really good job. I mean, I think that's Federico and his real expertise 
keeping this huge range in stock and, and doing it and making a, a profit. Um, we sell in over 70 countries worldwide, either through our own companies or through agents. Um, so again, if someone specifies a product, <coughs> say, can we get that printed in another country? We can often do that. We can make it happen. We can work with you. So generally, you can offer our brands um, generally around the world. Most, most places we can get it there. Um, as I say, logistics really are the key to offering a range like, like we have as a paper mill. I think it probably is the largest range of papers that anyone offers from stock in the world. It's a remarkable fleet of planning and financing, frankly. There is you know, the thousands and thousands, about 40,000 tonnes in stock of expensive papers. Um, so you know, it's a good job that Frederick only have a history of making money because that's a big job to finance that. All available worldwide. Um, through the you know the big warehouses in Italy that work really well, and now warehouses in Hong Kong and China, as that part of the world grows. Um, we have a big uh, warehouse in the UK in Northampton, um, where the sales offices counts the, the main the, the part of the business, and that's growing. We're just about taking on another lease uh, on on the industrial estate we are because of because of our growth, and so Italy continues to invest in us. We have around four thousand pallets in our UK stock, and we can offer that delivered anywhere. Order by 5.30, we can get it anywhere in the UK tomorrow. And we'll go down to 25 sheets of B1. Uh, we have a cutting service, so it's a very flexible service um, as well. Everything uh, is FSC in our range, which is recycle grade as well, but um, I think that was the key to have say that everything you buy from Pedregoni has an FSC accreditation. Um, then moving on to digital papers, because that's really why we're here. Um, we believe we're marking leaders in this sector, um, and that's probably because we went into it very early. Um, Frederick only produced an indigo paper before a lot of people did it. A lot of people did it by producing it offline with uh, sapphire treatment. Frederick only have always done it by doing it at the mill. In the early days, that was quite difficult because the market wasn't very big, and paper making is about volume and large minimum order quantities. Mm -hmm. But they invested in that. They're used to putting things in stock. Now that's grown to be a real, and also because we do it on a worldwide basis, that gives you the volumes to to go into, you know, to produce a big range, because if you sell it around the world, you know, you can get the critical mass. Um, what's been very important to us is we've been an HP media partner for years, and that's been critical to our development. We've worked with them, uh, a lot of testing. Uh, I think it's been a very be beneficial partnership in both sides, because I think Indigo printers early on wanted a range, they didn't want to be constrained by substrates, so having a producer that could make an interesting range of papers has been good for the industry, been good for HP, and of course it's been good for us. Um, in the UK, we have a really good um, distribution partnership with Premier Paper. Um, uh, they've done a great job. They've got a fantastic digital team that really understand the market. They can offer a better service than we can offer. They can offer same day if required. Um, so we've worked very closely with them uh, and they distribute our papers. Um, and that's been a, and it, uh, and they've also got you know a product team that understand the market. They push us to produce more sizes, bigger ranges. So we work very closely with them in developing the range. And uh, certainly, I know Italy really value the input we get from Premier in developing our range and have a big input into what we're doing. So that's also been absolutely critical in our development here in the UK. And the UK is by far the biggest market for Federigoni of digital papers, and that's Premier have made that difference. They haven't got that sort of partnership in, in other countries. Even where there's as many digital installations, they haven't got the volume out of the market that we have because of our partnership with Premier, that's for sure. And it's given us you know, really fast growth in a shrinking market, which is a good trick if you can do it. Um, as I've said already, all our indigo papers are treated in the paper making process, which we believe makes a real difference. There's no shelf life issues. Um, and actually, we just think it gives a bit of performance um, because it's actually ingrained in the sheet, if you like. So we have everything's 100% guaranteed and certified, and we, we believe that's, that, that makes a difference. Um, I won't bore you with the whole range, but it's just to show, it goes to show, I talked about, you're not really constrained by the substrate. You can go from coated, uncoated, we've got colour paper, textured, recycled, self-adhesive papers you'd expect because we make those sort of grades. We even have translucent. So, Really, there is a big range. Uh, we have a, a new book. For some reason, it's called Dangerous, Dangerous Places. <laughs> I'm sure someone had a good idea about that. But it is a fantastic new book that actually has a lot of examples of all the printing techniques for Indigo. It's got the full range in the back, so you can see the white papers. This is just out. You are welcome to take one away, but as you can imagine, they're rather expensive to produce. If you're going to take one away and specify our papers, 
please do. If it isn't useful to you, don't take it for the sake of it. But if you want to take it away and that will be a useful working tool, please do, you're very welcome. Um, but that is hot off the press and I think it shows up just what you can do with indigo papers, which your first bite will articulate much better than I will. Um, the other point we could make is that it, from our very wide range, and I'm saying this because G.S. Smith say this, who are a big competitor in this sector, uh, in specialist papers, and uh, they say anything from the range can be indigo treated. Well, same for us, we can do that. So we have a range of papers that are pre-treated straight off the shelf, or if someone said, we love that paper, could you get it treated for us? Of course we can, so we can do that as well. Um, I think the other point I'd like to make is that we have a lot of grades uh, that are matching grades within the range that you could print on indigo, you could print on toner based, or you could print litho, which I think is quite good for the design community, because you don't have to worry about it. If you like the paper, you can say we can have that for short run, long run, you can have it anywhere in the world as well. So there's a big part of the range that works on all three, not everything, but a big part of the range. Almost everything you'll see in that indigo book, we could also obviously print litho, and you can print on a toner based. Um, and it's worth looking at, this is our new Splendor Gel book, which is probably our leading paper. And in there, you've got examples actually of litho, toner based and indigo. And it just, it's quite interesting to compare how well one grade works and that's our brand new. And you're welcome to take those away as well. Um, uh, and the last thing I'd like to say is our range will continue to grow. Um, we're always being pushed by Premier, uh, and some of the range is sizes. That's quite hard to keep up with. Different from HP will talk about that, I'm sure, but there's as new machines come, it, it was a lovely business to begin with for a paper mill, and it was one size, two grains but one size. That's changing, but that's not a bad thing either because you know we're determined to make sure that we've got the best range. So, um, but uh, as the new machines come, then there's more sizes required, um, but we're developing in that and um, we'll continue to grow the range. Uh, just a little advert for this place, um, you're welcome to come here anytime. Uh, I don't know how many. People are, are quite local, but if you want to pop in and pick up a sample, um, there's often we're going to have events here. If someone wanted to hold a, a joint event, as we've done with Lawrence, you'll be, you'll be very welcome. If you want to pop in for advice, there's a really good experience team here that know our range incredibly well. Uh, as long as I'm not here, there'll be someone who knows what they're talking about and you can get some good advice and you can use it for your meetings if that's helpful. So really, please, please use it. You know, it's, it is for our customers. Um, so lastly from me, thank you for coming. I'm going to, uh, happy to answer any questions, either now, no one wants to speak up in front of everyone, but I'm around all afternoon, if you want to speak to us, no problem. Um, but I'm going to hand over to Neil Tilling from HP, he's going to tell you about that. <laughs>